What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to model out sliding door hardware. So we're going to model out the track as well as the hardware that allows the door to roll along the track. And then I would also like to do a video animating that, though that may be another separate video. But for now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so for this video I picked a piece of hardware that kind of hangs down below a door, so it's an overhead track that hangs down below a door. And I will link to this in the notes down below, but this is a product that I found from a manufacturing company. In this case it's a KN Crowder, and it's a CFT-202. And if you scroll down on the product page, there's a CAD detail down below, or not quite a CAD detail, but a detail that shows you a lot of the dimensions in here that we can use in order to model this out. And for a couple of these we may end up having to take a little bit of liberty with this but overall I think we're going to be able to get a pretty good result doing this so let's go ahead and get started so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to model out the flat bar that's going to make up the actual track itself so I'm going to start by creating um, just a simple rectangle so I'm just going to draw a plane right here, and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle that uh, that basically aligns with this. And so to start off, these dimensions are by default in inches, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my document settings to inches. So I'm just gonna go under document settings, units, and we'll set the unit type to inches for right now, and click OK. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to start modeling. So since we're in sketch mode, we're gonna tap the L key to activate the line tool, and we're gonna start by drawing a two inch flat bar. So it's going to be two inches long and I'm assuming this is probably going to be about seven feet. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say that this is going to be, or maybe six feet, we're going to say this is going to be 72 inches long. So we're going to draw a 72 inch line here. Then we'll draw a line in here and click finish sketch. And so what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to come in here and extrude this once we're done with our sketch. So we're just going to click on the extrude tool. And we're just going to extrude this by a quarter inch. It says this is a quarter inch piece of plate. So what we've done is we've modeled out our base plate that we can now build off of. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to cut the holes in this bar. And so that gets a little tricky because we're cutting the holes based on the screw size. So what I want to do is I actually want to go into the McMaster car component library and I want to download a screw. So in this situation, um, this has told me that these are going to be 5 sixteenths by 18 screws and they're flat head socket screws. So we can just go into the McMaster car library, click on socket head screws. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and assume this is going to be an ultra low profile and this library actually doesn't have a screw that's quite long enough um, so these are supposed to be 5 16 by 18 and it says the one that we're supposed to use is actually going to be a three and a half inch long but all we have in this library is the two and a half inch so I'm just gonna bring that down so we're gonna click on that and then under product detail we just want to scroll down and you can see how this shows us a little bit of information about this, but in this situation, we just want to click on the drop down down below. We want to click on the button for 3D step. And in this case, because we're not going to make a super ultra detailed model, we can go ahead and do it with the threads. There is an option here for no threads as well. But what I want to do is I just want to click save. When I click save, that's going to bring this screw in and it should bring it in at my uh, origin. So where the axes intersect inside of Fusion 360. There we go. So that's brought this in. So now what we need to do is we need to rotate this and we need to align it before we can create any kind of copies. So to start off, I'm going to take it and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm just going to click on this little button right here. And then I'm going to move this up a little bit. And then we can go ahead and try to center it. So to center that, so now that we've brought this in and we've rotated it, we want to center it on our wall. So we need to get it centered in an up-down standpoint before we can do anything else. So in this situation, what I want to do is I want to select the screw. And I just want the screw, so we'll click on it over here. And we're going to activate the Move tool. And we're going to use... We're actually going to use the point to point function. And so what I want to do here is I want to click on point to point and that allows me to set a point where I'm going to move things from. So in this case, I want my base point to be right on the center. And you can see how there's kind of an inference point right here. I want it to be right on the center of this object. And then I'm just going to rotate. And if I mouse over this face, you can see how I can actually set a point 
right here that's centered on this wall, which is perfect for what we're trying to do because what we want to do is we want to put this in the wall. Um, so this is actually exactly what we need. And so now what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to move it down 12 inches because I want this to be 12 inches from the end. And you can see how right now this is kind of uh, all the way through this. I actually want to move it back just a little bit using the move tool. So I'm gonna move it back to about, probably about right here where the head is going through here and we're gonna click on okay. So for this video, I'm not really gonna worry about cutting holes in this bar piece. You could definitely do that with the hole tool or something else if you wanted to. Um, I think for what we're trying to do here, it's not really necessary. So all I wanna do for right now is I just wanna take this one component or object and I just wanna create a rectangular pattern. So we'll go to create rectangular pattern. And in this situation, we'll wanna do a components and we're gonna to wanna to select this. And then we're gonna select our direction which is going to be the red axis or this line right here works fine as well because it's uh, it stays on the same um, X, Y or height, the whole direction. And so we wanna set the distance type to spacing. We wanna set the distance to 12 inches and we want to, you can click this little, you can click and drag this in order to kind of set this, but we basically want to create five copies. And we're going to click OK. We may come in and add the spacer caps on the back side of this as well. Um, but for right now, let's take a look at this from the front side or the back side. Now we've got our different bolts on here ready to go, or our socket screws ready to go. So this simulates what's happening with the wall pretty well. And so on the back side, um, what we would have is we would have a wall mount bracket. And so like, let's say for example, that I wanted to sketch those brackets in and I don't have an actual dimension on those. So we'd be kind of taking our best guess. But if we wanted to model those little bracket pieces in here, we would just create a sketch. We'd set our plane on this face. And then right in the center here, we would draw our circle. So we would draw a circle and these are supposed to have a diameter of two inches. So we would, so these are actually the full width of this bar piece. So what we would do is we would just draw a circle that's going to be two inches wide. And then we would click finish sketch. And so in this situation, that particular circle would be about an inch and a quarter from the center of that piece of bar. So, so what we would do in this situation is we would take that sketch object, we would select it. So we would go down to move object, sketch objects, and we would move it. So we're gonna move it off the wall. And for simplicity's sake, we're gonna call it an inch. Um, it would probably, in this situation, because that piece of bar is a quarter inch thick, it would probably be more like an inch and an eighth, actually. So, we'll say one and one eighth inch off the wall. And so this is where we don't have the dimensions or the thickness for this little cap in here. So we're just going to use the extrude tool and we're just going to extrude this out by, we're going to call this one, negative, we'll call it an eighth of an inch. And then we would create another sketch on the inside of this. So in this situation, we would do a create sketch, click on the inside face, so that we can see that and we probably need to turn our bodies off as well as our components. And then we would come in here and just draw another circle. You could probably use the offset tool as well, um, but I'm assuming that this is going to be probably about an inch in diameter. So we would finish our sketch. Then we could turn this body back on and we're just gonna extrude this object from here until it intersects with this face. So it's gonna be one inch, and we'll just call that a new body as well, and click OK. So now, what we have, if we turn all our screws back on, is we've got one spacer that's gonna be coming off of our wall. So we could take these two objects and probably put them together into a component. So we're gonna right click on this and do a make, uh, create components from bodies. And then we'll just take these and do the same thing where we create our, our copy 
using the rectangular pattern tool. So I'm just going to give it a direction. And we want this to be negative 12 inches. And we want to create five copies. So you can see how that's created our five copies right there. And we can click OK. So now we have our bar and we have our spacers on our wall. All right, so now what we need to do, now that we have our bar and our spacers modeled out, is we need to model out our wheel. And so to model out our wheel, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new sketch. So we're going to click on Create Sketch, and we're just going to place that along this plane right here. And then from here, what we want to do is we want to create a circle, but we want to create a two-point circle rather than a center diameter circle. That's going to allow us to place this above the bar rather than down below the bar, which can make it a little bit more tricky. So we're just going to click on two-point circle, and then we're just going to find a point along here. It doesn't really matter where at this point. And we're just going to single click, move our mouse up, and we're going to type in a value of four inches because we know the outside dimension of this object is going to be four inches. And so from here, what we need to do is we need to start giving it a little bit of thickness. And if we look at this, it's going to have one thickness on the outside and one thickness on the inside because that's what's going to make up our wheel. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to finish our sketch. And then we're just going to use the extrude tool to extrude this out because we know that this is going to have some thickness this way. So in this case, I'm going to say that this is going to be an eighth of an inch on the outside of this object. And in a little bit, we're going to kind of taper it down so that it looks like a wheel and other things like that. But for now, we're just going to kind of leave it as is. It's an eighth of an inch thick. And so now what we need to do is we need to model out the profile of our wheel, which goes on the inside. And so that's going to be smaller because the overhang of this is going to be what keeps the wheel on the track. So in this situation, I'm just going to create another sketch. I'm going to click on this face. And I'm just going to offset this perimeter edge in by a quarter inch. So I'm going to do a negative 0.25 and hit the enter key. And so what we've done is we've offset that in. So now we can come in here and we can extrude that and give it some thickness. So we're just going to finish our sketch. Then once we've finished our sketch, we're going to extrude this inward. And so if you remember, if we look at this, this bar has a thickness of a quarter inch. So it's a quarter inch steel bar. But we want, because what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to mirror it across the axis so we don't have to model everything twice. So what we want is we want this to be half of that thickness. So we want to extrude this in an eighth of an inch. So we'll type in an eighth and hit the enter key in order to extrude that in. And so you can see how now if we were to look at it from just like a straight front on view, this is taking up half of our steel bar, which is exactly what we want. And so now what we want to do, because we want this to taper up, we don't just want it to be a like a squared off edge right here. What I want to do is I want to add a taper along this wheel um, so that this tapers up. And so in order to do that, we're going to come in here and with the modify tool, we're going to select the option for chamfer. So when we select the option for chamfer, it's probably going to default to equal distance. And so if you were to click and drag that, you can see how this is going to chamfer that edge off. This isn't exactly what we want because we want this edge to go down to the edge of the interior object right here. So we want it to have a very sharp angle and then we want it to have a flat wheel look on the outside. So instead of using the default, what we want to do is we want to select the option for distance and angle. And so for distance and angle, what that allows us to do is that allows us to set how sharp this bevel is. So in this situation, for example, I want this bevel to be 75 degrees. I like the way the 75 degrees looks, and I think that works pretty well. And we want this to take up a distance of exactly half of the width of this object. So since it's an eighth of an inch object, we want this, the chamfer distance to be a sixteenth. So when I do a sixteenth, I click OK. You can see how what that does is that chamfers this edge up at that 75 degrees and then it leaves the rest of this flat, which is what we want because that's kind of the profile of the wheel that we're going to be adding in here. And so now that we have this kind of modeled in, um, what I want to do is I want to add the, the holes that are on the inside of this object. So this particular wheel, for example, has multiple different holes in here. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create a sketch on this face 
And in this situation, what I want to do is I'm just going to draw a circle as a guide. So we're going to find the center point right here. And I'm assuming that these circles are going to be about two and a half inches. So I'm just going to type in 2.5 and hit the enter key. And then at the top of this, I want to model out another circle. So I'm going to kind of mouse over this edge and then move my mouse up because it'll give me a inference point right here. And I'm assuming these are going to be about a quarter inch. So I'm just going to type in 0.25 and hit the enter key. And then once we're done with that, we can go ahead and we can click on finish sketch. We could probably actually delete out this circle right here because we don't need it anymore. But if we click on finish sketch, we now have a circle in here that we can extrude that'll cut a hole all the way through both of these bodies. So we're just going to activate the extrude tool. We're going to click on this. We're just going to click and drag it. And you can see how it automatically goes to cut mode because it's working its way through this circle. So we're going to go ahead and cut this hole. Click OK. So now we've cut one hole, but we need to cut multiple holes around the center of this object. So, um, or centered around the center of this object. So to do that, I'm going to go to create. I'm going to activate the pattern tool and I'm going to go to circular pattern because circular pattern allows me to copy something along an arc inside of Fusion 360. So we're going to click on circular pattern. And in this case, we want our pattern type to be features because features allows us to copy things like this hole that was cut. And then it's going to ask us what axis we want this to be along and we can actually select this circle. And you can see how it uses this circle to figure out where these need to be. And then in this situation, I'm going to click and drag this for a second just to look at these. But I'm thinking that these should probably be, we should probably have eight of these. So you can just type in a value of eight and click OK. And what that'll do is that'll take all of the holes that we'd cut, or it'll take the hole that we cut, and it'll copy it eight times equally spaced around a circle. And so now what we have is we have half of our wheel. And so with half of our wheel, we can now take this and we can complete our wheel just by selecting it. And under create, activating the option for mirror. And so when we mirror this, this is going to ask us what we want to copy. We're going to say bodies and we want to select this body. Then we want to click on this for mirror plane and we're going to mirror it. So you can see how now what that does is that mirrors the whole body that we had selected into a new body. So now we can take this whole thing and you can see how at the moment it's still slightly above this track. We can just use the move tool and we can move it down and it's going to be about a quarter inch. We can move that so that this is now resting on this track. And at some point I would like to come in and actually animate this moving. Um, we're not going to do that right now, but we can definitely do that in the future. And so I think this video is getting a little bit long, so I think what we want to do is we want to split this up into multiple different videos. So in the next video, we're going to come through and we're going to model out the spacer and the bar that hangs down um, that actually attaches to the door. We'll probably model out the door as well on the back side. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? If you like this style of video, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.